All right, let's get started with today's tutorial. So today I am going to crack open a new palette of sorts. It's actually a collection of tubes of watercolor paints that I purchased after watching a video that Christy Rice did back in, I think, January of 2023. Might have been early February. She was sampling and kind of comparing side by side uh, some different videos, um, some different palettes that she had purchased on Amazon that were in the mid price range. Most of them were palettes where you had half pans in them and they were all pretty interesting and it was fun to watch her go through that and she gave a, a number of great tips on how to do side by side watercolor tests to compare different brands. But there was one set of watercolors that jumped out at me when she was testing it and they were in tubes, not in, in half pans. And so that's, I, I ended up buying them. It cost me approximately $36. I'm in the United States, so that's 36 US dollars. And what attracted to me about them was that they were all pastel colors. Um, which might end up putting them in the gouache category, but you know, I was looking for something different. So this is what I picked out. They're Korean watercolors and they're all tints. So they've got some white in them. They're not labeled gouache. They say they're watercolors. And um, from what I've heard, uh, Korean watercolors are supposed to be very nice, particularly this brand. So I've never used Korean watercolors. And frankly, I don't have a ton of experience with watercolors. I am still a beginner. Been doing this about 18 plus months. So what we're gonna do is I am drawn out on here some boxes to do some color tests, some swashes and stuff so I can, you know, sample them out. And, um, and this is the box of paints that I got. So what they are, 12 different tints. And inside we've got get the box open, 12 tubes. Each are looks like 15, yeah, 15 millimeter tube, uh, um, milliliter tubes. And so that's a lot of paint. One thing I like is to buy things in tubes whenever possible. A lot of the palettes that are out there and most of the ones that Christy did do her demo on were half pans and I find that on a lot of them even when they're great paints it's hard to get refills on a certain color so you really like a certain color um, a lot of times you cannot buy a tube to refill your empty half pan so I do prefer buying in tubes and even though she said this was a mid-range I think it was the only one with tubes. I consider this one actually inexpensive because if you think about it, this is like 15 milliliters of paint. I don't know how many half pans you can fill with a single tube, but I'm thinking if I divide it up, I'm looking at like four or five fills on that. So this actually for $36 is cheap in the regard of the quantity of paint you get. Um, and the other palettes were all half pans and cost around 30, 30 to $40, I think was the range she was looking at. But I consider these cheap, but your upfront investment is much higher. And frankly, I find that the better quality the paint, the more painting you can do with it because the pigment strength is so strong. So like if you're buying Daniel Smith or Windsor Newton, which I own tons of their paints, uh, that's why I was looking for something different tints. I've like covered all the ordinary colors, so to speak. Um, but I can get way more painting time out of a tube of Daniel Smith or Windsor Newton or Holbein or Sennelier or any of those higher end ones. They just have more pigment in them. So we're gonna, we're gonna see how these ones are. Uh, but Korean is supposed to be a pretty good uh, quality paint. So, um, so I was looking over the box here and it's definitely made in Korea, and uh, it also was kind of interesting. I don't know if you can read it there on the camera, if it'll zoom in. It says prohibited from export outside of Korea, um, but I bought them on Amazon, so I think they've exported plenty of them. 
They also list inside the box all the different paints that they sell, including the number for the um, the product number for it and uh, I don't know what the ABCD is it's probably about light fastness or something like that but you've got the full spectrum of paint tubes you can purchase and they sell individual tubes so uh, I don't know if this yet are selling the tints individually but I don't know 15 milliliters gonna last me quite a long time so these are supposed to be you know they're higher grade paints and so I'm gonna crack them open, see what we got here, and make my swatch palette with it. Now, I haven't decided what palette I'm going to put these in yet. They're in tubes, or i got to put them in something. So, it's the one thing about tubes is you got to have a plan for how you're going to paint with them, and wh where you're going to store them, and that kind of thing. So, when you buy other palettes, they're already in half pans, and they have a nice, usually have a nice case, preferably a metal one, or a good quality plastic one or something that you can just open up and get going with um, but that's not the case these are just paints so if you're a new painter you know, or you haven't really purchased much or you just are like me and you don't know where you want to store them one of the things I really recommend that people do I've shared this with a lot of people I don't even know where I got the idea from unless I thought it up myself an ice cube tray you got 12 wells in it and I get 12 tubes of paint so how perfect is that so when my mom moved down to Florida she I don't know why she had tons of ice cube trays but she did in the beast basement and I took them I think I got like a dozen of or so of them so um, the white ones are better than like the, when they make them blue or something because you can see the color of the paint but this is a great place to just put them until you figure out what kind of palette you want them in and how you're going to use them in the long term but that'll get me going and because it's not really a palette and I don't have a place to really let me slide this down a bit a uh, place to really you know mix paints off on the side I just grabbed out of the kitchen a white plate just a Corel plate that I got at Walmart so I'm gonna you know if I'm gonna mix two paints together I want to thin it out with some water and I need another surface to do that on it's just a plate white plate out of the kitchen or if you don't have white plates in your kitchen, white is always easier to work on because you can really see the color. Just go over to the dollar store or Walmart, get yourself a cheap white plate, or use a disposable plastic plate that's white. Anything along that line will do fine. So you don't need to really invest in, in much until you know what it is that you do want. So we've got a plate if I need it to mix the paints on on the side. I've got my jar of water here I just use a mason jar and a plastic lid I have to put the plastic lid on it because I have a cat that likes to drink out of my water jar we'll see if she comes over while we're painting if she does I'll have to pause and get her out of the way but that's um, why I put a cap on it plus if you travel with your water or whatever you just want to make sure it doesn't get knocked over just to you know with the um, store they sell in the canning section the lids the plastic lids that go on and I just grabbed three standard brushes, nothing fancy. These are not like high quality brushes. I find that the place to spend your money is on good paints, good paper. I don't have great paper for doing the swatches. It's Strathmore paper, but um, buy cotton paper if you can. My favorite, really cheap cotton, 100% cotton paper. It's made by Artbeak. That's usually what I'm painting on but I'm just going to do it on the Strathmore. It's, you know, it's the one that you've probably seen at the store a whole bunch of times. I live up in Massachusetts and we have a store called Ocean State Job Lot and they sell it real cheap. I paid six bucks for this. It's usually a little bit more at most places, but standard Strathmore paper for this demo. It's not my favorite. Sometimes the sizing is wonky and I'll paint just fine and then I hit something where the paint beads up on it. I don't know. People like Strathmar. I just use it for testing, but nothing, nothing good. Um, but just brushes are the thing that I find. Uh, the, it's nice to have some really good ones. I usually am using um, the Princeton brushes that I have. I have both the Velvet Touch and the Aqua Elite. I like those a lot. 
but when it comes to getting paint on paper, you can find some gems amongst a collection of cheap old brushes. And, you know, I've even painted with the edge of like cut up credit cards and plastic cards and different things like that. I just took a watercolor class with somebody else teaching it and we were painting with all sorts of different objects from around the, the house. So um, if you're going to f figure out where you want to start spending your money, if you want to upgrade onto something, start with buying better quality paints. Or if you haven't yet bought any paints and you've somehow stumbled across my video, this is like the second video I've posted, so I'm not like terribly well known at the moment, of course. But if you happen to not have any paints and you stumbled across this and you thought, I'm going to go out and get some paints. If you can afford it, just dive in and get some better quality ones, preferably in tubes where the brand lets you buy refills of that color if you happen to fall in love with it. So, um, and then go next to paper and then brushes can come in next but it does make a difference when you have good brushes it is easier to control them they hold their shape better and that kind of thing so and then of course you don't need anything particularly fancy for a palette or a mixing palette you know something out of your kitchen or the dollar store sells ice cube trays and uh, any kind of glass or plastic or you know disposable cup I just like the mason jars so let's get started and see what we've got here and of course I also have paper towels. That's really the only things I can think of I need at the moment. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of paint in here. We've got Brilliant Pink. I'll put a little bit in the bottom here. I don't want to put too much in because this is just a temporary spot. So I'm just going to put a little dab and this little dab will probably go a really, really long way. So, and then this one says shell pink. I actually have shell pink by another brand. This one's separated. It's got some wateriness. I don't know if, um, I don't know whether they're, well, they've got gum arabic in it, I'm sure, but I don't know if they use for their humectin, if they're using honey, glycerin. It has a kind of a yellowish cast to it, but maybe the gum arabic. Um... Jean Brilliant, which is like a peachy color. I have that in another brand, I think also in Mission Gold. Naples Yellow is not a color I've had before, though I've definitely heard of it before. These are metal tubes from what I can tell. Sometimes they make plastic that feels a little bit like metal, but this seems like a metal tube. Uh, pale green. They have lots of colors in this too. 12 tubes that have got plenty to play around with. That's why I thought it looked kind of good. The other palettes that Christy was testing with were colors that, for the most part, I already owned. But this was something that was a whole palette of colors I really just didn't even have. Or if I have any of them, I have very few of them, like the the shell pink and the jaune brilliant, which is mine is jaune brilliant. No, that is number two. There's two jaune brilliants. All right, then we've got blue gray. Lavender, Lilac, which is the one I keep picking out of the thing while I was looking at it. I'm really interested in Lilac. That one's got a bunch of air in it. Popping out. There's that Lilac. Purple Gray. Oh, that's weird. I have 14 wells in my ice cube tray. I didn't even notice that till just now. When I went to put it in, I'm like, I missed a row, and I thought I missed the paint. But nope, I got two extra wells. And um, neutral tint is the last color, which is close to black, but it'll be a 
shade off from that. So there we are. So now I have 14 trays in my, usually there's 12 things in an ice cube tray. At least I thought there was 12. Anyway, so we've got our colors. I'm just going to place that there. And we've got all the colors and I seem to have a little flex of something in my thing. All right, so let's now go and I'll have to label these with a Sharpie. I do have some Sharpies here. Or I call everything a Sharpie. This is a pilot pen, so not actually a Sharpie, but it'll do the trick. And I am going to, let's see if we can just do it with the mid-size brush, which is a number eight. And I'm just going to start in with finding out what we got here. So we'll um, put it here. And it's definitely much more opaque as it's in the uh, the less water. But let's see how it thins out. water and just get it. I thought these colors would make pretty flowers and other things I might choose to paint. So, so that gives you an idea of it. It does, does thin out pretty nice. So it's a little harder to tell what I'm going to think of these paints on this paper because it's not the kind of paper I usually paint on. So I'd have to bring it over to the art beak which is what I always paint on. This is the one that's got, I think I'm gonna have to mix this around a bit more because it was separated. None of the other ones are separated, just this one. It looks like a pretty color though. So, I we'll a little more water here. Oh, too much water. And dope. It's a very pretty color. bought these a while ago and I've been wanting to paint with them but since I'm starting to put videos on my YouTube channel it's all brand new I wanted to record it and I've just been so busy taxes are done so that frees up more time and um, some other things are behind me so I can uh, get back to making videos so probably to put that on quite the best way it seems well actually what I can do See if I can make it a little darker on the side. Get too much water going on over there though. It should be darker on this side from the way I'm planning it and getting thinner as it goes to the other side of the rectangle. There, but that maybe that'll help. Maybe I can lift some of this up, get it to instead of doing a top down, I should go side to side. So well, I guess it looks top down to you guys, but um, really I could, I was thinking I could rearrange this a little bit different. It could kind of make more sense. We'll put this over here and we'll rotate it and line that up. So there, I mean, that'll make it more sense. So there we go. Then, back to my hands. I'm going to go to this one here, which is the Jean Brilliant. And that needs more water. So, what I'm trying to do is get it to be kind of what they call butter, is a term I've heard a bunch of times. And then you've got my milk and then tea and that just refers to how much water you've got mixed into your paint so the tea would be like very watery so it's just barely got a color 
in there and then the milk would be a little thicker and then the butter is like extra thick and there's a lots of different terms you can get for that but it's one way that people have described it that I've heard a few different times so but there one challenge about working with paint straight out of a tube and I know some people that's the only way they work but I think most people would take the time to get the paint out of the tube put it in the palette and then let it sit and dry so I find it a lot easier to work with paint if it's then dry it on a palette and then I re-wet it. And that's the most common way people do that. It's, you have more, I, th I think you have better water control when you're starting with paint that's been dried into a palette and then you're reactivating it, adding water. So, um, but some people only buy tubes and only work out of tubes and if they don't use up all their paint, they just, Rinse it down the sink. I think that's a waste. It's watercolor. I mean, one of the benefits is that it can dry out and you can reactivate it. So why would you do that? I don't know. But that's just how some people work and you get a different quality of a picture that way. So sometimes doing that, I'm just gonna kind of see a line there. There. Yeah. I see I've got some back runs going there from adding too much water. Let's see if I can dry my brush up on the napkin and try to clean that up a bit. Let me just make more of a mess of it, but we'll see. Now I'm probably going to make it all streaky this way. See if that helps. All right, next color up is this pale green. Probably could pick up a little bit more paint than that. They seem very nice. Once you get them on the art beat paper, it'll be easier to tell since it definitely makes a big difference how your paint moves based on the water, I mean, based on the water. Well, yeah, the water too, um, based on the paper. Water has a lot to do with it. Otherwise we wouldn't call it watercolors, right? But your paper makes a big difference. So I didn't realize that so much at the beginning when I first started doing watercolors. I was, you know, the only thing I could get my hands on was arches, which is really quite excellent. It is better than the art beat paper that I use, but it's way more expensive. And as a new painter, uh, I just um, couldn't bring myself to paint on the arches that often until I felt like I really knew what I was doing. But when I came across the art beat paper, it must have been a year ago, it was 32 sheets. And when it first came out, it was really cheap. It was like 10 bucks for 32 sheets. It is all cotton. It's now up to 20 bucks. So in the in beginning when they were introducing people to it, it was really inexpensive. But even at 32 sheets for $20, that's still um, a really good price. And so I can, and it's, I, they sell it both glue bound, um, glue bound all around. So it's um, on three sides. So it's more of a block, but they also sell it spiral bound and I like the spiral bound for using it like a journal. So I can just paint and then flip the page and since it's spiral bound, it'll lay flat and I can keep it like a journal. And if you haven't already seen my other video, I walked you through that journal um, of things I'd painted over the last few months. So I'm gonna be painting a whole lot more often now. Um, so probably take me a lot less time to go through one whole pad, but um, I can paint a lot better on cotton paper, I've discovered. So I recommend it, whether you buy Art Beak or Arches, or there's a couple other ones that are trying to come out now with 100% cotton paper, and all of them are just better than 
doing it on um, this wood pulp. So including Canson, which is probably the better of all the wood pulp ones. This is a pretty color. I could tell when I got it out of the tube that it was gonna be nice. It's a pretty color. Could use it on the sky. If you do buy paints that are really cheap and they get chalky, when they dry out and they fall out of your palette, because I have a bunch that do that kind of thing. Even occasionally some of the good quality ones will uh, come loose in the palette and, you know, the chunk of hardened um, dried out paint will, you know, be loose in the palette. If you take a little bit of either glycerin or even honey from your kitchen, just a little teeny tiny bit and put it in the bottom of the palette well and then stick your paint in on top of it. Um, that'll keep it in place and you won't have that problem. And both glycerin and honey are humectants, so they will absorb moisture from the air and keep the paint from being quite so dry. Sometimes paints only have gum arabic in them and when they do that they get very dried out. So if you want to get adventurous you could try mixing in uh, a little bit of honey or a little bit of glycerin right into the paint. Don't get carried away doing that because I did. I tried that out with some cheap paints and then they get kind of, I don't know, funny to paint with. It was just, I put in too much, but a little, little bit can be helpful to kind of make the cheap paints be nicer to paint with. Um, but they're still going to be lacking in pigment, so you're not going to be able to make them much more vibrant or denser in color, those kinds of things. That's just, they didn't put much pigment in those cheaper ones. So that's why buying the more expensive paints, technically with the amount of stuff you can paint with the higher end paints, it actually is cheaper if you do the math on it. How far that tube will fill a pan or how many pans that tube will fill how far you can paint, how much, I mean, you're going to have to water, the higher end paints are going to have to add more water just to thin them out. So you might actually save money buying more expensive paints. All right, we are now on to this purple color. This is not lilac, this is, oh, this is lavender. So la there's lavender and there's lilac. The lavender is bluer and the lilac kind of crosses between um, the purpley blue and, and the getting more pink into it, so. I'm barely putting any paint on my brush, so I think they're doing fine in terms of pigment level. And then in Christy's video, she also did a bunch of different things. Um, including, you know, how well they lifted after getting re-wetted, you know, the, let the paint fully dry and then re-wet them to see if you can move the paint or whether it's become like fixed on the paper, that kind of thing. So I'm just making color swatches. See, here's this thing right here. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera. I guess a little bit. This Strathmore paper, sometimes it has weird binding in it and I'll go paint and it's like the paint won't stick in a certain area. That's the first one on this page that I've come across, but I don't know if you can see it right here. 
it just is repelling the paint. And that's kind of why I don't like Strathmore's paper very much is I'll be painting and there'll be these sections where it wants to, you know, repel the paint. Like it's got the binder built up in one spot. If I paint over it enough, it will let go. But if you're trying to do a nice even wash, that could be interfering with it. So that one seemed to have recovered, but usually I run into a few of those. There might be more on the page, but I just, they're in the white areas, so. All right. Um, that was, that one was lilac. That's lavender. And now we're on to purple gray. Doesn't seem very gray, but it's a gorgeous color. That's nice. It actually has nice pigment in it. I like the color. I like that a lot. I like all of these colors. This is definitely what I was looking for. It was something with some pastel -y colors. Because I've got all of the regular traditional colors that like every single palette seems to have. And so Mostly I buy palettes because they're cheap and I'm curious to know how good they are and I've got plenty of palettes to play with. But this one of all of them is different so because of all of them being tint colors. Now this brand also when I was ordering it they do have boxes of tubes of the traditional colors so if you don't yet have a good set of paints I'm gonna guess that these guys are pretty good too and pretty economical. And you could get a box of the traditional ones. So. One thing I didn't look to see is if on these tubes they give you all your pigment information and all. I'm assuming they do, but I forgot to look at that. You can always tell when you have a pretty decent brand as they'll actually tell you what's in the tube in terms of pigment colors and they'll have standardized codes for it so so that was the neutral tint and as black as it looks in here it came out as gray so pretty colors let's see what we do have on one of these tubes so this one has an a for light fastness followed by two two stars and a box that I don't know what that symbol means. Um, Joan Brillian has stuff in Korean. It's on the back side here. Numbers for ordering. Yeah, and I'll need a magnifying glass, but yes, so the pigment information is here. At least I think that's what that says. I think it's written in Korean. I think that's more that than my eyesight. But I'm thinking that's probably what's going on there. Um, oh, nope, here it is. Pigments, PO20 and PW6. PW6 is your standard white that um, isn't anything that's tinted. And PO is an orange number 20, so. Um, yeah, so they have them all on it now that I've oriented myself, PO34, uh, PR9, PW6. So this has an orange and a red in it, PR9, PO34. So, I mean, you could get the traditional pigments and mix it yourself with some PW6. This one's PR209. So... I'd have to go look up what 209 is, what it matches to. So every brand wants to call their colors, usually wants to call their colors different things. PY35, PBR24, so it's got some brown and yellow with white. Um, but then, um, you know, then they'll have pigments. And if they're a good brand, they'll tell you what pigments are in it. So... 
Um, all right, so that's my swatch thing, and I'm sure I will paint something else with these paints. As a matter of fact, I'll probably do that today, but I'll make that a different video. So, um, but that's kind of if you want to open up a new palette that you just got either at the store or online and you want to do something to start with, make swatches. And I did it this way. There's boatloads, boatloads of different ways of doing swatches. Maybe I'll do a video on like all different ways to swatch out your paints. Um, but this is one way to do it. I like the big swatches so I can really see it. I can even, uh, it's probably a little too long. Well, it depends on what palette I put it in, but I could cut it in half down the middle and then trim it. And it probably can sit inside of a palette if I use the kind that folds over. What I like using though is a metal box, anything metal, the magnets stick to. So like, you know, any kind of box that's fairly thin and, and get half pans or full pans and glue the magnets to the bottom of those plastic pans and just put them in the metal tin. And you can repurpose lots of different metal tins that way. And then you can move your paints all around in different orders. When you decide you want them in a different order or you want to just work with a few, you can just pop them out, stick them in a different smaller metal container or, you know, tin box and, um, and then put them back in your larger set. So that's one thing I like to do, but, um, but anyways, I'm going to just end this video here. And so perhaps you'll find yourself wanting a set of them as well. I'll have to go get a link and put it below the video. And that's something else I have to set up is figuring out how to get links for Amazon. So you can, um, I go over and check these out. So I'll uh, have to do that too. All right, so end it there and I'll see you in the next video. And if you really enjoyed this, of course, you should know the habit by now. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe as well. I would really appreciate it, especially if you can do that like button. It does help other people find my videos and it's a good habit to do to anybody you watch a video from whether it's me or anybody else it's like saying thank you i enjoyed your video i got something out of it so always hit the like button and if you'd like to watch more videos by me or whoever you're watching also subscribe it really does help us out and then encourage us to make more videos as well so um, i appreciate that thank you